session. But this session will count in my life in the name of Jesus. This session will count in every department of my life. Lord, I ask that you visit me. The, the Lord will visit you by his word. The same you that came in here is not the same you that will live here. Wave your hands anywhere and everywhere. Whatever you are, give him glory, give him praise. For in Jesus, mighty, much less name, we have prayed. I know for sure God has been good to you and you have your honor entrance. That is the entrance behind where the pastors are and document your testimony for those of us here at the Faith Tabernacle. Let's put our hands together as we welcome the Shiloh Mass Choir for a prayer session. We give you glory, Jesus. Somebody bless his name this morning. Lift up your hands and celebrate the King of Kings. The glorious God. Excellent God, we give you praise, Lord. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, I bow before you true. everlasting Father. Your wonderful hands to God, the King of Kings, they shall have it. Hallelujah. There is no one like you. There's no one, there's no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like you. 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 There's no one
no one like Jesus. There's no one, there's no one like you. There is no one like you. There's no one like you, Jesus. No one like you, Jesus.
2022 and covenant highways put those glorious hands together for Jesus and you may please be comfortably seated in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah praise God in this morning session of this we shall be taking the first watch session this morning and it's important for us to know that until understanding dawns turnaround is not established in the level of the believer where you and I are today is a function of the understanding that you and I have received and put to work in our lives. Jesus said to the Jews that believed in him in John chapter 8 and verse 31. He said to the Jews that believed in him that if you continue in my word, he said, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And as God's servant has said to us yesterday and even today, uh, until uh, there is a result to show, you and I don't know it yet. Maybe you know something, but you don't know it sufficiently enough to bring about a turnaround in that area of your life. Therefore, this morning, uh, I'd like us to rise to our feet as we go before the Lord in prayer. The Father, enlighten my understanding as your word comes forth this morning. Enlighten my understanding. Uh, open my eyes to see the things that I'm yet to see in that area of my life uh, that will bring about a turnaround in my situation and in my circumstances. Go ahead and pray. Maybe you know something, but you don't know enough. Father, enlighten my understanding. Help me to see sufficiently enough to bring about a turnaround in my own life. Help me to see sufficiently enough to bring about a change of story in this area or that area of my life. In every area of challenge. Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name that we have prayed. Amen. To bring us the first word this morning. I'd like you to help me put your hands together and join me in welcome our Vice President, Mission and Special Services, Bishop Thomas Aremo. Put your hands together for Jesus. Twenty twenty two and Covenant Highways. Amen. Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven as we approach the first hour of visitation in Shiloh 2022. Lord, visit me. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, I desire an unforgettable encounter. Make sure your heart is crying for a definite impartation definite impression definite experience this is the first hour of visitation ask god for first hand encounter pray in the spirit pray your understanding pour your soul unto god From this first hour of visitation session, I want to begin to encounter you more than ever before. Encounter your will, encounter your will, encounter. Definite encounter in the covenant. Lord, visit me. Begin to let the Lord know that you are opening your heart to receive the understanding of the world. Lord, my heart is open. And by your grace, I am set 
to receive your engrafted word which is able to save my soul and give me inheritance among them that are sanctified. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In this first hour of visitation in Shiloh 2022, God will surely visit you. And you see, every visitation from heaven culminates in transformation of man. By this hour of visitation, as God visits you, you will experience new level of transformation. In the name of Jesus Christ. When God visits a man, you begin to experience miracles, signs and wonder. It begins to do the unusual. His level will begin to change. That is you in this session. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, send your word with power. Put the right word in my mouth. Let my mouth be filled with the word you have said. Give to someone here a word in season. And Lord, we reserve for you with what we know you will do. We reserve for you all the glory. In Jesus mighty name we are praying shout a faith fire amen. amen put your hands together for the Lord and please be seated it's a privilege to be asked to take this first word in the hour of visitation for today and I'm not taking that privilege for granted I'm taking it for gratitude gratitude to God and gratitude to the apostle over this commission our father who has kept on handing over to us the table of the covenant for over 40 years now out of the abundance we have received it is out of it the holy ghost will enable me to bring just little within the time allotted and i believe God's war will find a place in your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm asked to share with us on the prayer covenant. The prayer covenant. The prayer covenant is one of the fundamental covenant. In the scripture, the prayer covenant is a covenant that must be kept. It's not if I like, I pray. If I like, I don't pray. <laughs> it's a must. He spread out this divine assignment. Prayer is a divine assignment from God himself. And it's a non-stop assignment. It's not an assignment that I have done it. No. There's always what to pray. And there's always what to pray for. That's why I said pray without ceasing. This is the covenant that puts you in motion. To escape all oppression of the devil. The prayer covenant. Well, whatever has not been consistent with this covenant in your prayer altar, God will heal all your infirmities. Some of these words are coming, one, to remind you of your responsibility in the prayer covenant. Two, some of the words are coming to empower you for greater power dimension, to pray better. Let me say this to everyone. There is none of us here that has prayed enough. 
There is no graduate in the school of prayer. We learn more to pray more. We see more to pray better. If you are truly prayerful, you will discover that the more you pray, the more you see the need to pray, the more. If you see a man say, I ah, pray enough. Okay, where is the proof? I've done everything I ought to do, nothing is happening. <laughs> there are too many things you have not done. That's why nothing is happening. Those who walk according to the covenant and pray according to the covenant, they don't say there is nothing. No, they have something to show. Those who know their God will be strong and they shall do exploit. Well, another thing that this teaching will do, your prayer limitation will be broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. I thought I'm a man of prayer until I read from somebody that pray better. And never after I encounter the light, you will see in my office maps of the world, map of Africa, map of Nigeria. You'll be wondering whether I'm doing some aspect of geography. Because they are so conspicuous there. But God has taken me a step further. Every troublesome part of the war is God's territory that is invaded by the vagabonds, by demons, and agents of hell. It's my father's war. The heart is the law, and the fullness thereof, and the people therein. The people should not die. He said, I don't even want even sinners to die. And then, there is a place in the world war is going on people are dying even though it must come to power but it can be controlled by prayers so my own break in the office is to pray it's also satisfying my physical therapy i stand up and any point I discover there is trouble, Satan seems to be winning. I lay my hand and I begin to intercede. I didn't know that before. And that has expanded my limitation in prayers. I want to say to everyone under the sound of my voice, God will break all limitation in prayer that you have before Shiloh 2022. Yeah. A new prayer energy will surge up yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We also learn what it takes to have our prayer answer. Enough of wasted prayers and enough of waiting forever and become wasted as you are waiting for answers you are going to a new realm that while you are yet speaking God will be delivering the answers in the name of Jesus Christ let's take our text from Jeremiah 29 Jeremiah 29, the prayer covenant, verses 11 to 13. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. The thoughts they are mean plans, the thought of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected hair. I know the package. I have the blueprint. I know the blueprint and the content. But look at the next verse, verse 12. Then shall you call upon me. This is the Almighty. 
the God of the covenant, the covenant keeping God, given an assignment. Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Oh, that scripture contains all that is packaged in the prayer covenant. You shall call. You shall go. You shall come unto me. You shall call unto me. And then I will answer you. May this scripture be fulfilled in your prayer adventure. In the name of Jesus. And you shall seek me. And find me. When you shall search for me with all your heart. Let me say now that prayer has its root. In a heart that is learned with the will of God. You search for me with all your heart. Not with all your mouth. That's why you may hear some people shouting, screaming with all manner of demonstration and nothing is going anywhere. If it is not from the heart, there will be no connection with the heaven. May I give you a definition of prayer? Prayer is heart to heaven communication. Securing God's attention or intervention. Art to heaven. Communication. It's not mouth to heaven. Heart to heaven. The moment you are kneeling down and saying something and you know your heart is not there, don't waste your time. Stand up and go and do something else. Because people spend hours in prayer, but their heart begins to go all over the world. They go to their friend in Canada, and from there, to the one that is in Holland, and to their office and all the problem that is there, and to their children that are in the school. And then they will say, yes, I'll pray for one hour. To who? You have prayed to yourself. And of yourself, you will get your answer. Beginning from now, put your right hand on your chest. Your heart will be fixed on God. Anytime you approach the throne of grace, your heart will be fixed on God. I come against wandering spirit on the prayer altar. And I command focus and concentration. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And let me tell you this. Prayer is fundamental covenant. It is basic. You can't jump it and go to something else. Prayer is not, le 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 let's do something else. You can't do anything. And you, if you do it, you won't do it well. If you don't go via the foundation of prayers, Prayer is the foundation for every success that will stand the test of time. Otherwise, it will be balloon success that come up now and fade away in no time. Prayer is the foundation. Jesus' ministry are depicted in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John began with prayers. Jesus warned the apostle, carry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endowed with power from on high. Don't rush. Don't say we know it. Don't say we have been imparted. Tarry. And they were in the upper room praying until the power falls. One of the things that this covenant provoke. As you embrace it and follow the demand of it, the prayer covenant, when followed with understanding, 
it will deliver to you the power to commence so you will start anything you want to start where if you pray before you start it will deliver to you as you continue the power to continue Paul the apostle say have we received help from above and that's what we seek in prayers i continue to this day continuity is a function of connectivity on the prayer altar and it will deliver to you also the power to complete you become a man of accomplishment no no more abandoned project but if you start with prayers and you go lukewarm continuity is doubtful and no accomplishment for every god or them venture power to begin power to continue power to accomplish is provoke in prayers hear this prayer is the control tower in the kingdom and a pilot that will not mind the control tower we end up in a crash your Christianity will not experience a crash. So disconnecting from this prayer tower may lead to a crash in your adventure to destiny. And prayer is one of God's covenant too for the realization of our glorious destiny. Yes, we have a glorious destiny. We have a prosperous destiny. But we will pray all the way until everything that pertains to us is delivered to us on the platter of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, what is prayer? Prayer is dialoguing with God on the basis of covenant guidelines as spelled out in God's word, dialoguing with God on the basis of covenant guidelines as spelled out in God's word. Covenant rooted prayers are word based prayers that God cannot but answer. That's why you have to fill your prayers with scriptures. It is written. It is written. What are you praying? God may not hear your word, but he will surely hear his word. Prayer is saying God's word back to him to secure intervention, to secure confirmation, to secure manifestation. Let me give you another definition. Prayers is putting God in remembrance of his word and prophecies. For what? To secure delivery and fulfillment. Putting God in remembrance of his word and promises and prophecies in order to secure delivery and fulfillment. Isaiah 43, 26, he said, put me in remembrance. Come now, let's reason together. Ezekiah is an example of covenant-rooted prayers. Ezekiah, in Isaiah 38, 3, there was a negative prophecy on him. You are sick. You may not make it. You will die. Ezekiah said, for what? And he went to God in prayer and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth. I have walked in the covenant. And with a perfect heart, and I have done that which is good in thy sight. And 
Ezekiah wept sore. That's prayer. If you check it to fast five, you will see that Isaiah was asked to return and withdraw the word. The mountain of Shiloh 2022 is a mountain of remembrance. Yeah. Just like Ezekiah went to God, you go to God and say, remember now. Begin to press covenant button that must be remembered for the delivery of your wonderful answer. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. What are the covenant purpose for prayer? Number one, to secure help and intervention from heaven. Let us come therefore to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. Hebrews 4, 16. Let us come. It is to secure help and divine intervention. We are so helpless by many standards. No matter how you feel and how <laughs> what you think, you are still helpless. If the Lord does not help you, you are finished. Even at your state now, in Second Chronicle 24, the Bible says, Judah gather together to ask help. That's the one major purpose of prayer. Number two, to advance the kingdom of God. God runs his kingdom through the prayers of the church. The prayers of the saints to advance God's kingdom on the heart. Psalm 2, verse 8. Ask of me. Ask, ask, pray. Pray, ask of me, and I shall give thee the hidden for thy inheritance. That be no church growth without prayers. And the uttermost part of the heart for thy possession. You come take hold of anything here. I'm the owner. Ask of me. I will deliver it to you. I will deliver souls to you. I will deliver the material world even to you. To advance the kingdom in, on the heart. Number three, to resist and destroy oppositions and oppressions you don't keep looking at the devil wasting your life wasting your destiny tampering with your family you don't keep watching this unending struggle in your career to resist and destroy opposition and oppression Ephesians 6 10 to 30 we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality and power, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore put on yourself the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand. And in verse 18, he brought out vividly the covenant, the prayer covenant. Pray always. How many times? With all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watch the to with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So when will you finish this syllabus? Supplication for all saints? Praying always? You now get somewhere and say, I pray enough. You have not prayed enough. You have prayed some prayers. And you must continue from where you stop. The Lord give you understanding. Yeah. Covenant purpose for prayer number four. To enforce <laughs> your consecration. If you are prayerless, you will be sinful without knowing. A prayerless man, we have heard it said in Nigeria, is a powerless man. And the only resistance against the forces of wickedness is prayer. There's nothing the devil fear in you and through you than your prayers. Remove your prayer intensity and prayer line and prayer fire. You are off. The flesh will take over. You become lukewarm, careless. You become insensitive. 
So one of the purpose of prayer is to provoke and enforce our consecration to God and the kingdom. Zechariah 3, 1 to 3, we see what becomes of uh, Zechariah. Oh, we see what becomes of Joshua. He showed me Joshua, the high priest. Who is Joshua? And then who are you? Standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing in his right hand to resist him. And we see the story up to four. Satan put upon the man of God, high priest, feed the garment until he received help from above. Take away the feed the garment. And then the change of raiment came upon him. If you are not prayerful, you will wear feed the garment until you become spirit, soul, and body filthy. And what do we mean by consecration? It is the submission of godliness, righteousness, holiness. Are you hearing me? Sanctification. All those cannot be attained or received without prayers. Remember? Romans 1 4 the spirit of holiness so there's a spiritual dimension there is a spiritual dimension in holiness and whatever is of the spirit you receive it through prayers anything that is promised by the spirit must be approached with prayers for delivery Number five, the purpose of prayer to fellowship and interact with God on continuous basis. It's not just to ask for something. It's not just to receive something. God delights in your coming. He delights in seeing you. He delights in your thankfulness, your praise, your worship. So one of the reasons why we pray is to fellowship with God. In case you feel you don't need anything, go to God. He's your father. If God is your father, go home. Go and interact. And can two walk together except they agree? So the Bible says in Luke 18, 1 to 2, men ought always to pray and not to faint. First Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. Colossians 4, Three, continue in prayers. Why the continuity? Fellowship. So it's not just where you kneel down and assume your prayer posture that you pray. As you drive, you are still in fellowship with Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your heart is talking. You are pouring your soul. Your heart is busy and connecting with the celestial in order to control adequately the terrestrial. The Lord give you understanding. Amen. So these are few. This is not all the purpose. But I believe all this purpose shall be fully achieved as you pray. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me mention the spiritual dimension of this covenant. There is a spiritual dimension to prayers. That's why not everyone that wants to pray is praying. And not everyone that prays receives answer. There is the spirit of grace and supplication. Zechariah 12, 10. And God said he will pour it upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And that is talking about the church. So I command the fresh release of the spirit of grace and supplication. New fire on your prayer altar. By the spirit of grace and supplication. In the name of Jesus. And Romans 8, 26 to 27 say, We don't know how to pray as we ought to. We need help. And our helper in prayers, in carrying out the demands of this covenant, is Holy Ghost. Likewise, the Spirit also help our infirmity. For we know not what we should pray for as we heard, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groaning which cannot be altered. 
the spirit take over break make us to break through limitation instruct us on the prayer altar strengthen us with might from the inner man to continue prayer until we get to a point of answer in the name of jesus christ i want to let you know we have a prayer answering god every prayer that is lining up with the covenant provision is bound for an answer whosoever ask it receive it god cannot turn down prayers that are pray in a conda with his wall he delight to answer us not answer all answer us with good speed with good speed in Isaiah 65 verse 24 there is a very good scripture there that make us to rejoice it shall come to power and before they call I will answer ah, ah. they are just preparing to call I say okay this is the answer and while they are yet speaking I will hear they have not left the altar they are still on their knee. They are still lifting up their holy hands to God. God say, I will answer. Beginning from Shiloh 2022. 20, speedy answer is your portion. <laughs> Wonderful answer is your portion. <laughs> you will no longer have wasted prayers. <laughs> answer will keep tumbling down. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. What are the covenant demand for answer prayers? Number one, understand the will of God for which you are praying. For the subject matter you are praying. You are praying about marriage. Go and study what God says about marriage. You are praying about healing. Go and get healing scriptures. Meditate on it before you go to prayers. Understand the will of God. Because if we pray according to his will, he heareth us. First John 5, 14 to 15. Covenant demand for answer prayers. Number two, avoid ambiguity in prayer. Be specific. First Samuel 1, 13. Hannah judge, not just pray. Say, hey, I want a baby boy. If you can give me a baby boy. I will return him to you to serve you. Avoid ambiguity. Don't just say, oh God, bless the whole world. That's not prayer. Oh God, bless my family today. You have no prayer. Generalization in prayer uh, cannot provoke an answer from heaven. And number three, have faith in God. Mark 11, 23 to 24. Whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe you have it, and then you shall have it. Have faith in God. Be loaded with expectation. Have faith in God. And number four, approach the throne of grace with thanksgiving and praise. Don't just be in a hurry because you are in an urgent situation. Oh God, oh God, come down. Oh God, do this. Oh God, oh God. No, 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 no. You prepare the atmosphere for him and for your connectivity. Enter his gate with thanksgiving and his court with pray. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So, your approach matters in prayers. Approach with hallow word of grace. Approach with worship. And number five, fill your prayer with relevant scriptures. You can even open the Bible and read appropriate scripture. And be using it to emit fire in your prayer water. And number six, avoid worry and anxiety. Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And as we round up this teaching, what are hindrances to prayers? I'll just summarize it in two minutes. Many do not have their prayer answer and their answer delivered because of the following. Number one, sin and disobedience. 
God heareth no sinner. Psalm 66 verse 18. If I cherish iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. No matter who I am. No matter the intensity of my vibration. A sinner cannot approach the throne of grace and be accepted and be welcome in the beloved. And Zechariah 7 13 said, because he cried and they will not hear. They will cry and they will not hear. God asks you, stop fornication. You won't stop. You now have HIV. You are crying. He may not answer. You better introduce mercy into your prayer point. Number two, ignorance of the will of God on the subject matter. Many are ignorance of provisions in the covenant. They are ignorant. They don't know it. Yet they claim they know. And so the prayer is dried, empty. The prayer has no substantive evidence. So, my people are distressed for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4 6. Go and be enlightened and receive understanding. And number three, doubt and unbelief. Let him ask in faith, not doubting. If you doubt God, you are damned. Unbelief. You must believe him before he can receive you and before you can receive what you ask. James 1 5 to 7. And number four, self centeredness. An uncare attitude for the poor and others. Give me food, give me water, give my wife, give my children. After that, prayer has ended. Make sure you intercede for order, intercede for soul. Galatians 6, 6 to 9. Whatever you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Learn to pray. Have a list of people you are praying for on a regular basis until there's a testimony. And number five, impatience. It may take a little bit, but it will come. He that will come, will come, and will not tarry. Don't say, but if God will do it, he will have done it. Who told you? If you trust him, you will wait for him. And number six, pride. Luke 18, 9 to 14. Pride. I am this, I am that. You better humble yourself as you are going to the prayer altar. Two people went to the prayer altar in Luke 18, 9 to 14, the Pharisee. And the other, the Pharisee was making bold. I pay my tithes. Nothing should be tied for me. I do this. I fast twice. God said, I don't want people like you. You are helpful. I want the helpless. I want those who can trust me, who know that I'm the only one. And the Bible says, he went from that place condemned. And the other one, who magnified God, worshipped God, bowed before him, humbled himself, was justified. From today, every aspect of pride in your heart is cast out. Grace to approach the prayer altar with all humility and with all connectivity. Receive it in Jesus' name. Stand on your feet. Give him thanks for whatever you believe you have received. Give him all the glory. Give him the honor. Give him the adoration. I embrace the prayer covenant afresh. I follow the demand of it. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. Shall we welcome the mass choir as they lead us in praise. Put your hands together for the Lord for them. All powerful God, Almighty God, all powerful God, you are worthy to receive all our praise. You reign forevermore. Almighty God, powerful Jesus, mighty God, you are worthy, you are worthy to receive all our praise. You reign forevermore. Almighty God. to receive all my praise you reign forevermore almighty god god of Shiloh, powerful jesus you are mighty mighty you are worthy of my praise almighty god we celebrate you lord miracle walking god we praise you lord you are worthy Somebody stop! 
together for Jesus and be comfortably seated. Hallelujah. Without any doubt, I'm sure somebody was massively blessed by that first word. And if you are, I'm sure you will clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, God is not done with us yet. More is coming. God's word is God's tool for terminating every reproach and shame in the lives of men by showing us what to do. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. He says, But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. God's word transforms our shame to glory and that shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus Amen. but what you behold is what you can hold what you see is what you can take and therefore as we expect God's word that is coming we will rise up and pray Lord open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law I'm sure somebody wants to pray that prayer. Rise up on your feet and lift up your voice. Lord, open my eyes. As your word comes again, open my eyes that I may behold the wondrous word that is what coming out of your word. As your word comes, open my eyes to see my blessings, to see my miracle, to see my breakthrough, to see what to do and take my blessings. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Mighty name we are prayer. Somebody expecting shout the loudest. Amen. Amen. Bringing the second word this morning in this Shiloh hour of visitation is our first vice president, Bishop David Abioye. Put your hands together as we receive God's word. So you like to clap better, stronger, and louder for Jesus. And if you can shout as well unto him. Please 
lift up your hands and let's give quality thanks to God again. For the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. Let's thank Him for opening our eyes to His word ever since Shiloh 2022 commenced yesterday. Let's thank Him for the Shiloh hour of prayer and for the word we have received the first in the series in the covenant in the hour of visitation let's give him quality thanks let's praise his name let's thank him from the depth of our heart and let's thank him for another word that is coming our way at this moment no one like him give him all the glory due to him blessed be god forever in jesus wonderful name we are prayed amen. let all who are expecting additional blessing this morning shout the loudest amen. amen heavenly father we want to thank you for all of your blessing that you have unveiled to us in the packages of the covenant jesus amen. now oh lord we pray that you would teach Lighten and empower in the name of Jesus. Thank you. I humbly and with gratitude appreciate the privilege given to me by God through his servant, our Father, the Apostle of this commission to bring to us a word from the Lord as he continues to unveil to us the tables of the covenant. And I'm very sure that if we take delivery of these tables, our lives will be growing in higher dimension of transformation. In the precious name of Jesus, out of much of the blessing we've received through his servant, it's a privilege again to communicate to us. In this second word session, building on the first one, which came to us very powerfully, with great impact, I believe, we'll be looking at covenant for all round rest. I can see somebody excited about that. Covenant of for all round rest. As you listen to this word this morning, I'd like you to expect that it will not only enlighten you, but it will impart you with all round rest. In your family, you will have rest. In your academics, you will have rest. In your business and career, you will have rest. Over your children, you will have rest. In your large family, you will have rest. Amen. After Shiloh 22, you look to your right, to your left, to your front, to your back. The only thing you will find will be rest. Amen. Look at this altar. For over 41 years now, this ministry has never suffered any crisis and you are a member of this family i declare by the unction that back up this commission you will never know the meaning of crisis again this is one of the main reasons god brought you and i to Shiloh 22 to encounter to experience rest all around round from this Shiloh you'll be living as if Satan does not exist let's begin by establishing that all round rest is a reality it's real. Don't be carried away by the troubles around the world. You are not in the same class with them. 
You live in the world, but you don't be belong to the world. You can create your world within the world. Darkness shall cover the house. The house. And you are not the house. Draws darkness the people. You are not the people. You are different from them. I say you are different from them. What they suffer, you will never suffer again. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 10. Let's establish that with a number of scriptures. But when ye go over Jordan, now there are three significant situations and landmark in the life of the children of Israel. Number one was Egypt. Number two was beyond Red Sea. Number three is beyond Jordan. In Egypt, they were in oppression. Between Egypt and, I mean, between the Red Sea and Jordan, they were not settled. They were not settled. They were facing several difficulties, lack of water, lack of this. But when ye go over Jordan, what does that mean? Egypt represents when we are not born again. After Egypt, we got saved. And we have been going around here and there. But when you enter and go through Jordan, rest is waiting for you there. Therefore, if you have been born again and you have not known the meaning of rest, at Shiloh 2022, you will go beyond Jordan. Look at that verse of scriptures again, Deuteronomy 12 10. When ye go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit, and when he giveth you rest, when he giveth you rest, say, I receive rest from all your enemies, all your enemies, all your enemies, diabolical enemies, social enemies physical enemies what did he say he will give you rest from all your enemies around about so that ye dwell in safety so one meaning of rest is safety that is robbers come close to your house and they don't like to enter why god has given you rest victory over them Say loud, amen. amen. Chapter 25, verse 19. The same Deuteronomy 25, 19. Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God had given you rest. God speaking into your future. Rest is waiting for you. From all your enemies round about. In the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it. That thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalekite from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. Joshua chapter 21 verse 44. I'm taking us through these scriptures. So that you know what God intended for you. He wants you to have rest. Say with me God wants me to have rest. And the Lord gave them rest round about. According to all that is swear unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. All your enemies will be at your mercy from now. <laughs> Chapter 23 verse 1. We are reading all of this because the scripture said out of two or three witnesses, every truth is established. But when it goes beyond two or three, that means it is truly established. And it came to pass a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. That means even at your old age, you will still be having rest. <laughs> Crisis will not kill you. <laughs> Hypertension will not kill you. Practical levels of people who are dressed in addition, 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 1. 
David had rest. It came to pass when the king sat in his house and the Lord had given him rest, round about from all his enemies. The same thing happened to Solomon, chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. It happened to Jehoshaphat, 2 Chronicles, chapter 15, verses 12 to, uh, 15, 12 to 15. Then, chapter 20, verses 29 to 30. Asa, in chapter 15, Jehoshaphat, in chapter 20. God gave them rest round about. If you can, please lift up your hand. I declare that from today. The God of this commission, who has given us rest as a commission, beginning with his servant, rest round about, will establish rest round about for you. <laughs> By this same unction, I cause every unrest from your life from today. <laughs> rest is waiting for you. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. There remains rest to the people of God. It's your entitlement. It's your inheritance. It is waiting for you. There remains, therefore, a rest to the people of God. Say with me, I enter into my rest. <laughs> Say it by faith right now. <laughs> All around. It covers your spiritual life, your children, your family, your social life, business, career, finance, even your environment. Satan will become afraid to come close to your door. <laughs> Satan will be afraid to come close to you when you are on a journey. <laughs> Why? When God giveth quietness, who can make trouble? That's the order of rest we are talking about. The one that intimidates your enemies. The one that scares them away from you. The one that makes them lose their confidence to confront you. That is the order of rest that God is giving to you. Other words in scriptures used in the place of rest includes peace, calm, trouble free crisis free lifestyle and Jesus promised us peace John 14 27 my peace give I unto you my peace there is the order of peace that God has the order of peace the kind of peace that made them to sleep in the midst of storm he said that is the order I give to you from this season, no storm will trouble you. <laughs> Chapter 16, verse 33. In the world, there shall be tribulations. But you be of good cheer. Because I have given you peace. These things I have spoken unto you that in me, ye might have peace. So may I have peace. <laughs> in the world, they don't have it. What they have is tribulation. But you, the peace you have will cheer you up. That's something about the peace God gives you. It cheers people up. I have overcome the world. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Saying it is a righteous thing with God to recompense trouble, tribulation to them that trouble you. Verse 7. And to you who are troubled. After the trouble, rest. Rest. I don't know how much I've been troubled till now. The next thing that follows is rest. If you check the scripture very well, trouble is not supposed to end us. After trouble, we are expected to have rest. I decree therefore, whatever trouble you had before Shiloh 2020, Everything will turn to rest for you after Shiloh. Please note that there is the promise of peace and there is the covenant of peace. Why are we differentiating this? Promise means these are the provisions as God's servant taught us last night. 
These are the provisions. If you are interested. Covenant means these are the conditions if you engage in them. So God gives us the promises and at the same time the demand. The promise is like proposal. The covenant is like the demand, what God demands of us to do. You have to grow from promise of peace to covenant of peace. Promises may be broken, but covenant cannot be broken. Psalm 89 verse 34, my covenant will I not break. Now many, many believers are living in the realm of promises, promises to claim. But we are going to see from scriptures as the Holy Spirit unveils to us what to do to step into the covenant. To move from the realm of promises into the realm of the covenant. Abraham started his journey with God's promise in Genesis chapter 12. And as time went by, chapter 17, God introduced him to the covenant and sealed the covenant in chapter 22. So we need to step up from living in the realm of promises to living in the realm of the covenant. And the realm of the covenant is the realm of rest. When you are too sure that God cannot fail. From this season, your rest is guaranteed. Amen. Numbers chapter 25 verses 12 and 13 let's read a few scriptures about covenant of peace covenant of rest wherefore say behold i give unto him my covenant of peace my covenant of peace and he shall have it and he seed after him even the covenant of an everlasting priesthood because he was zealous for his god and made an atonement for the children of israel promises are limited to us as individuals but covenant extends beyond us to our generations to our generations covenant is an investment into the future of your children beyond you therefore as you step into this covenant today generations after you will be enjoying peace and quietness <laughs> isaiah 54 verse 10 isaiah 54 verse 10 for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed but my kindness shall not depart from thee neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed said the lord which hath mercy on thee this scripture will be fulfilled in your life beginning from shiloh 2022 <laughs> we can also read from ezekiel chapter 34 verse 25 chapter 37 verse 26 and of course from Malachi chapter 2 verses 4 to 5 the covenant of peace say I receive it Amen. say I enter into it Amen. now how do you assess the covenant of all round rest number one you must be born again new birth is your registration into the covenant of peace salvation has three basic evidences romans 14 13 for the kingdom of god 14 17 please the kingdom of god is not in meat and drink but in righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For those who are wondering, how do I know I'm born again? These are the three basic elements that begin to manifest in your life when you are born again. Your taste for sin begins to die. If you are still interested and in loving sin, you are not born again. Every truly born again will lose taste for sin and have taste for righteousness righteousness and then peace 
peace indescribable the peace of God that passes all understanding and joy excitement in the Holy Ghost how Jesus is described as the Prince of Peace Isaiah chapter 9 verse 4, 6 the Prince of Peace so when you get born again when Jesus comes into you you have a deposit of peace that comes into you you have the peace personified person who comes into you Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God when you get born again peace is a major manifestation of the same say loud amen somebody amen. Matthew eleven twenty eight. come unto me all of you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you peace I will give you rest so when you come to Jesus in salvation you enter into rest you get registered for God order of peace if you are here this morning you are not born again that's what you are missing why do I need Jesus I need him for peace I need them for peace we live in a troubled world I need Jesus to live a peaceful life say loud amen. amen number two access to covenant of all round rest is learning from the word of God learning the completion of Matthew chapter 11 verse 29 come to me and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me learn of me I am meek and lowly in heart and in the process of learning you shall find rest unto your soul look at that rest begins from the soul from the soul if you are not restful inside nothing will be restful around you we learn our way into rest into peace into quietness into crisis free life Isaiah 59 verse 8 the way of peace the way of rest they know not so ignorance about the subject of peace can lead to your crisis in life the word of God is the highway to the covenant of peace if you are not a learner you will end in crisis my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge second Peter chapter 1 verse 2 tells us about the peace we enjoy grace and peace be multiplied so it's not enough to have the primary level of peace but we need to multiply it because troubles are being multiplied in this world through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord the more you learn the more peace you enjoy learning learning Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 and verse 17 my son forget not my law let thy heart keep my commandments for length of days length of days and long life coupled with peace shall they add to thee so knowledge hath peace to destiny our ways that is the ways of the world the highways of life are ways of pleasantness in the midst of crisis that others suffer and all our paths are peace peace to ignore the word is to embrace crisis to ignore the word of God is to embrace crisis when you receive the word you are receiving capsules of peace a day without the word 
will end as a crisis free day that's why we must wake up every morning with the world don't fix dangerous appointment for yourself settle with the world so that your destiny can be settled a day without the world makes you ready for trouble we must learn the truth what are we to do look at areas of your life where you are not well settled and focus on that subject matter for instance you don't know why your wife is always angry with you you need to sit down as a man what is provoking this woman if you can't find it in the world observe those who are ahead of us for instance i observe how my father here treats his wife how he talks to her and i started applying the same to my wife and i began to see the same order of quietness and peace People don't know what is troubling them. Your children are very rebellious to you because you abuse them every day. You make them hopeless. I know you will never do well. You are like your mother. Your mother, both of you, is your liver that he ate. You ate the liver of your mother. Uh, <laughs> your children say, well, We are going to show you. We are going to show you. The word of God teaches us how to guide our children and says to us that your children shall be children of peace. Find out what it takes. Find out what it takes for husband and wife to live together in peace. Prayer of 30 days and fasting cannot help you out of that crisis. You go out in the morning, you didn't find out how your children will eat and how your wife will eat. You return in the evening and say, shall we pray? Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Your portmanteau, your handbag is locked. Nobody knows the key. Shall we pray? What prayer are they praying? When you failed in providing for them. I tell men all the time, if you want to know how well your wife can smile, and laugh and respect you give her a regular check give her a regular check the way of peace the way of peace the way of peace that one prayer and fasting cannot solve it look at another example here you are a business person and you are facing crisis in your business you need to find out what am i doing that is eating my resources you want to travel from kaduna to lagos you go to the airport when you know the money you have remaining you are spending your capital to travel when you should enter night bus you get to obalende in the morning wash your leg wash your face comb your hair they will think you are coming from your house and you finish your business in the evening you are taking night bus back to Kaduna don't kill yourself you know what they call hypertension it comes from tension and tension comes when things are tense don't tense your life your pace if you don't want to lose your peace at your pace over and over we have been told the the story of the beginning of this ministry we had it again God's servant was talking about how he started with his beetle before then or about that time God told him that this ministry will be flying across the globe with aircrafts you know this is what God does he will show you your future and take you away from it so you can have a small beginning but many see it big but they don't want to start it small before you become global you have to start local 
you have to the way of peace we must learn we must learn we must learn the way of peace after God blessed him he remembered me and also blessed me with a car that car that's on 140k very powerful car anybody who didn't see that car before has missed something with all eagerness I drove that car I was privileged to be serving in Meduguri then from Kaduna to Meduguri six hours I was eager to meet with the service in the service I told God's people I said aren't you glad God has blessed your pastor with a brand new car and a little boy went outside to go and look for brand new car he didn't see brand new car and told the mother I hope our pastor is not lying I said tell that boy to open his eyes very well there's a brand new car outside there go at your pace if you don't want to lose your peace life is in faces we have had God's servants say that over and again and men are in sizes stretch but don't stress stretch but don't stress you cannot beat process if you must live peaceful you cannot beat process if you must live peaceful please look at me here how far can you go that way but God gave you two legs one as you move this this is resting you move this this is resting and you can cover longer journeys go at your pace if you don't want to lose your peace number three quickly enter into covenant with god to keep serving him and the interest of his kingdom serving god brings you into the same with God serving God makes you a friend of God makes you a partner of God as they went for him he went with them and he gave them peace nobody could trouble them those who dare trouble them were stricken with blindness There was crisis in the days of Asa in 2 Chronicles chapter 15 and to come out of that crisis they entered into a covenant verse 12 to serve the Lord God of their fathers with their heart and with their soul and at the end of the day God gave roundabout do the things of God and God will cater for your peace he will ensure that nobody troubles you at all that's what you have been enjoying this commission going after God God going with you God going after you they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing including peace Psalm 34 verse 10 Seek you for the kingdom of God and his righteousness And all these things All these things Including peace of mind Shall be added to you Peace is an addition To redemption But you need to enlist To serve God Make him first And he will guarantee your peace People look at me And they ask Just like they do for my father You always look calm you always look peaceful so why not he has taken care of my peace he promised I will not see trouble I'll keep serving him so I can keep enjoying his peace you can't serve God and lose your peace from today as you make a covenant to serve God the Lord your God you will never lose your peace again <laughs> among other areas where we serve God to secure our peace is through soul winning and establishment Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15 tells us about the gospel of peace. You can be a distributor of peace and lack it. 
your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace gospel preachers always enjoy the peace of God you can't carry peace and suffer lack of it Jesus said as we go to preach Luke 10 verses 5 to 6 thou shalt say peace be unto you peace be unto you gospel preachers always enjoy the peace of God in return what more are we to do to enjoy all round rest as we begin to round up we must keep declaring peace boldly in the face of every storm peace does not connote absence of storm it means gaining control over the storm when they come gaining control over the storm when they come we saw this happen to jesus he said to his disciples let us go over to the other side mark chapter 4 let us go over to the other side verses 35 to 39 and satan says you will go under and his disciples came and tapped him master we perish jesus said not when i'm here and he arose there arose a great storm of wind storms will always arise and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full look at what jesus did and he also arose so you have to rise to the storm that is rising against you he arose and he declared peace be still and there was a great calm peace be still every time you sense some storm some crisis around you don't fail to declare peace be still peace be still in the night you hear some sound that is not a welcoming one peace be still you are in the air flying and there was a great storm peace be still and there was a great calm so your declaration is what establishes the calm from this day no storm shall be able to withstand you again from this day, no crisis will be able to stand before you. I declare that the order of peace at work in this commission will go with you from Shiloh. So to multiply your peace, multiply your service to the kingdom of God. In every local assembly where you belong to, engage in serving God in one way or the other. It's a way to multiply your peace. As you are taking care of the things of his kingdom, it takes care of the things that concerns you. You will not hear the sound of any enemy standing before you again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Will you rise to your feet with me and uh, raise your hand, renew your covenant of service. It is the covenant of service that secures the covenant of peace. Lift up your voice right now. Begin to renew your covenant of service. Begin to declare to God, I will serve you every day. I renew my commitment. I intensify my commitment. I increase my commitment in serving you. Somebody pray that prayer right now. Pray that prayer right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father, in Jesus' precious name. Before you take your seat, will you begin to declare peace over any kind of storm around your life? Storm over your health, storm over your finances, over your business, over your children. Peace be still. Peace, peace, peace be still. Thank you, mighty Father. Please lift up your hand if you can by the unction that backs up this commission. Every storm around your life and your family be calm right now. So shall it be. Give God a big hand and please take your seat. If you were truly blessed by the word, give the Lord a big hand of praise. It is Shiloh 2022 testimony time. I thought somebody's clapping and you're excited about that. Please, if you hear your name, 
quickly rush down to the altar to share your testimony. Ayo, Lomi, Olayemi, Nimu, El Bacon, an elder and Mrs. Emmanuel Edet. If that sounds like your name, quickly hasten your step to the altar. In a moment, your name and what the Lord has done for you. If you are coming, church, can we clap as we receive them? <laughs> Elder and Mrs. Emmanuel Edet, Nimu El Bakon, and Ayo Lomi Olayemi. Please come up, your name, straight to the point, what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord, I'm more than a conqueror. I've come to give God the glory. My name is Nimu Labla, and I'm from Liberia. I've come to tell God thank you for breaking marital spell in my family. I woke up and saw most of my aunties are married, and when it reached my turn, I told God my own case must be different. Last year, I came to Shiloh at Canaline here, and I brought my point of contact, which was a ring. I wore that ring all through Shiloh 2021. I was privileged to serve in Central Area Unit in the bathroom where I cleaned and told God to clean my life. And God did it. 26 June this year, I got gloriously married. And two of my aunties also to God alone be all the glory. Are you celebrating the Lord? 20 years of marital spell ended by an encounter at Shiloh 2021. Your name, straight to the point. My name is Mrs. Aye Lomiola Yemi. I thank God for my life. Last year, October, I have a terrible accident. The motor tumbled three times. So the motor fell upon me. So I'm under the motor. They used plank to carry the motor up. I, they dragged me out of the, under the motor. They rushed me to the hospital. The doctor said that I should not come down on top of the bed. I should dead there. So on uh, getting to that is the October. So December period at Shiloh last year. I pray to God that God for this Shiloh, before any of this Shiloh, I want to I want to give the testimony that God has healed me. And through through Saturday the, uh, the anointed service, the God of Shiloh healed me. I stand up on my feet and I walk. So I give God all the glory. Broken legs mended at Shiloh 2021. Let's celebrate the Lord some more. Praise God. Our names are Elder and Mrs. Emmanuel Edet. We have come to give God all the glory for terminating four years barrenness in our marriage. Four years I have been coming to Shiloh, not until Shiloh 2020 that I came bittered and battered. On this altar, I cried unto the God of this commission. Before that 2020 Shiloh, we apply, and my husband were planning to go for an IVF which the doctor told us that it was not going to be possible because of my husband is having a low sperm count. And on that Shiloh, I cried unto God. On that day of impartation, I heard God spoke to me that I should do something I have never done before. I told God I am going to give 150000 as my Shiloh sacrifice. Via that sacrifice, when I went back, I gave my Shiloh sacrifice. On March, what the doctor said, it can never be possible. On March 2021, 20, I conceived, and here is faith, Emmanuel, added to the glory of God. Baroness terminated via encounter at Shiloh 2021. You are the next to testify. Give the Lord a big hand of praise.
for those testimonies will you give jesus a big big hand of praise is worthy of all the glory please pay attention to these shiloh 2022 announcements number one praise the lord you are welcome to the hour of visitation expect to experience definite encounters with god's word that will position you for a covenant push button adventure in life in the name of jesus christ somebody believes say loud amen. amen number two please acquaint yourself with the schedule of services we have our specialized sessions taking place between 1 th 1 30 and 3 p.m and also the encounter night taking place between 6 and 9 p.m specialized classes include the following healing and deliverance which takes place at the faith tabernacle hope arm fathers and mothers of nations which takes place at the faith arm of the faith tabernacle breaking generational causes at the glory tent breaking marital siege at honor entrance tent academic breakthrough at hope arm tent and business and career turnaround at the youth chapel and finally building an exemplary family at the faith tabernacle love arm all of this is contained in our bulletin and officials will direct each one of us accordingly number three praise the lord we admonish to acquaint ourselves with the camp ethics contained in our bulletin and report any violation or suspicious behavior via the contact details contained therein number four praise the lord please follow our authentic social media handles as displayed on the screen for information on shiloh 2022 also use hashtag shiloh 2022 and hashtag covenant highways to share all shiloh 2022 content on our social media platforms number five please be informed that your bad translation takes place at the youth chapel while friend translation takes place at the hope wing of the faith tabernacle number six you may scan the qr code on the back of the seat in front of you the banner in any of the tents on the screen to access all shiloh giving channels and the shiloh 2022 announcement bulletin for this event note that the bulletin is also available on the shiloh 2022 website finally number seven praise the lord there are quite a number of ministers of the gospel from various nations of the earth for all ministers present from nations outside the shores of nigeria we ask that you please rise for recognition in this service let's give jesus a big hand as they rise everywhere all ministers of the gospel from outside the shores of nigeria rise god bless you god bless you you are welcome in the name of the lord jesus give jesus a big big hand jesus is lord <laughs> hallelujah shiloh 2022 and covenant highways Hallelujah, it is Shiloh offering time. While we get our offerings ready, Genesis chapter 8 and in verse 22, he said, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night. Two things to take away. One, Seed time and harvest continues to produce for as long as the earth has not finished. Number two, for as long as the earth is solid, strong, and reliable enough to carry your weight, seed time and harvest is reliable enough the covenant is reliable enough to deliver the harvest once the seed is sown if you woke up in the morning and your feet still hit the earth 
it means that the covenant remains in place. I believe that somebody's harvest is coming today in the precious name of Jesus Christ. These Shiloh offerings are in three ways to give. Number one, cash. Number two, checks. All offering checks should be written in honor of Faith Tabernacle Canaan Land and all sacrificial seats should be written Faith Tabernacle Sacrifice. However, in our various assemblies around the world, checks should be written in the name of the local assembly and labeled appropriately. Number three, electronically, using channels such as the USD code, bank transfer, text to give, etc. These channels also offer various currency options. You may also access these channels using the details as it is on the screen. The Lord bless you and bless us as we give in Jesus' name. Can we stand up on our feet and lift up our offerings and just bless the Lord? Father, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the adoration. We ask that everyone's seed will attract the needed harvest. Thank you for the covenant of prosperity, the covenant of supernatural supplies. We receive harvest as we give. Blessed be your name in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord the praise. Take your seat as we invite the praise. Oh, mighty God, oh, oh, oh. hallowed be 
your name. Faithful Jesus, you are. Praise the Lord. Amen. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 46 and verse 47. God's word says, and it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. The world himself sat to hear. It was when he heard what was said, understanding of him was an astonishment to all. It is those who sit to hear God's word that the world will hear from you. Jesus, the Word, sat down to hear the Word. And it's those whose hearts are open to hear God's Word that will gain understanding for the next phase of their lives. And I'm sure someone is said to hear God's Word. Without hearing, 
nobody will hear from you. And he listened attentively. Then they were astonished at his level of understanding. They said, how come? So someone here today will say, you will leave this Shiloh as an astonishment to your world. Yeah. Understanding will never come until you listen to those who are teaching God's word. And we are said to hear from someone who has proven, who has shown that it works. It's not just theory, practicals in his life, and we all know he is someone who carries the word to be a blessing to humanity. How many are set for an encounter? In the next third section of the word, our Father and the Lord will be bringing God's word to be a blessing to us. Shall we rise from wherever we are seated and open our hearts to receive God's word as we hear from him this hour. Lift your hands to heaven and say, Lord, I'm ready to receive your word right now. Go ahead and pray that prayer for yourself. Jesus, in Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Yeah. One of the mysteries of gatherings like these, which we always miss, is the empowerment that goes on as the word goes forth. And the Spirit entered into me when he spoke unto me. It's an empowerment that goes on as the word of God goes forth to those who receive it. As many have received whatever word comes from the Lord, from his word, he gave power to become the sons of God. So there is power going forth as the word is going forth. There is power going forth as the word is going forth. There is power going forth as the word is going forth. So the last two segments of the world we've had, power had gone forth as the world went forth. And those who receive that, it stays, it shows. Most time we wait for prayers to be empowered. But God's word is the carrier of God's power. As it goes forth. That's why revelation can be intoxicated. Is the wine nature of it. Praise God. Can be intoxicated. When I saw I've been seated far above brothers and powers, every devil lost recognition. Every devil lost recognition. The power came forth. I was looking for where to manifest it. God's word always goes accompanied with power. Please take time every time you are before the world. Reach out for empowerment that accompanies it. The word that Moses had empowered him to undertake that suicidal mission. He didn't leave his wife behind so he won't lose his heritage. He carried them along. Moses departed to Egypt. In his land, in the land where he was a wanted man, carried his wife and his two sons. The world empowered him. This is the place empowered me above all doubts to invade this forest. Amoku can crack on now. So it comes both in Rema and comes also in Revelation. That's right. Accomplished. I'm talking about uh, the covenant of empowerment. And it's important for us to know that the highest form of empowerment is word empowerment. Word empowerment. 
What empowerment? What empowerment? What empowerment? What empowerment? What empowerment? And with that consciousness, watch what will be happening to you from here. With that consciousness inside of you. God's word is not for fancy, it's not lecture. No. It's power. And the is expect the word only. And it's our way to hold the self same hour. The word only. Power went forth with the world. Thank you, Jesus. For waves of empowerment on this mountain that has already begun. May your portion be fully delivered. Thank you, Jesus, for your blessing. Since the visitation hour began, receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the empowerment that came along with your word. Thank you and thank you in Jesus' name. Speak to us again and deliver the covenant table of empowerment to us so we can stay empowered all the days of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and be seated. been working on the series unveiling the covenant highways of life and these highways are embedded in his world so we're talking about the covenant of empowerment this morning first Corinthians 420 is our text for the kingdom of God is not in world but in power. Life in the kingdom is at a risk without empowerment. Life in the kingdom loses color without empowerment. Life in the kingdom is miserable without empowerment. Jesus said, after teaching those folks for three and a half years, tarry you in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. I can't guarantee your safety. I can't guarantee your triumph without being endued with power. Luke 24 verse 49. Power. The kingdom of God is not in world, but in power. It answers to power. The kingdom answers to power. The kingdom answers to power. And in Acts chapter 2, Oh, let's go to chapter 1 and you shall see power. So he talk us it power. Interpreting what was said in Luke 24, 49. And then the Holy Ghost came. With cloven tongues upon each one of them. Empowerment is a personal phenomenon. There is no such thing as corporate empowerment. The fuel in my car can run my wife's car. The fuel in your car cannot run the car of your wife. The oil in my life, in my lamp, cannot lighten your lamp. Zechariah 10:1. He gave showers of rain to every one grass in the field. Empowerment is a personal requirement and a personal responsibility. A church is a 
powerful church. That's okay. How much of that power is at work in you? My pastor is a powerful pastor. Does he have any expression in your life? There are people that kidnap us can't sight. Talk less of attempt. Ask them. They know. They know there are people they can't sight. That demon possessed soldier. Hey, 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 hey. Have you come to destroy us? There are people they can't sight. Talk less of molest. Someone visited a is cousin here and saw a calendar of the church with me holding the microphone. He said, please turn it back, turn it back, turn it back. There's fire in that microphone on the picture. On the picture. God wants us empowered so we can subdue our enemies. Yes. It's so important. There was a robbery spree sometimes in Abuja, and these robbers saw my saw the banner of our church on Winner Satellite Fellowship and saw my picture there. A Yoruba man was leading that gang, the robbery gang. Ah, Baba wa ni biwe okay. That is take cover. Baba is here in his picture. Papro be kanota. Jesus said, "The words that I do." Jesus, not so much more people like us. Jesus said the work that I do. All you need is get empowered to operate in that realm. That's what we need to do. You thought on peace be still. We had this challenge on our way to Israel in a big bang in the plane. Peace. The plane gathered itself. My prayer is that the last molestation of the wicked on your life ends here today. Yeah. And I pray that as the world goes forth, the undeniable manifestation of his power shall begin to take place in your life. There were five virgins, I mean ten virgins, five wise and five foolish. The oil in the lamp of the five got finished. Give us of your own. He said, no, it's not transferable. Go to them that say, go to where you can find it. You will find it here today. First, let's recognize that life is a battlefield, not a playground. For we wrestle, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. Blast the darkness of this world and wicked spirit in high places. Ephesians 6 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. We are confronted with spiritual battles. Psalm 9 and verse 91 and verse 5 to 7. The book of Psalms 91, 5 to 7. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night. The night is full of terror. Nor for the arrow that flyeth by day that you cannot see. Nor for the pestilence that walketh about at noon day.
the person that walked in darkness, no, the first destruction that wasted at noon day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, so they cause people to crash. And ten thousand at their right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Life is a battlefield, not a playground. The reason we need to be empowered. I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. So there are serpents and scorpions in the invisible realm that we walk over day and night. It takes empowerment to triumph in spite of them. But it's not enough to be empowered. You must stay empowered. Because if you if you faint in the day of battle, Proverbs 24 verse 10, then your strength is small. We can't afford to get ready for the battle. We must live ready for the battle. These battles have no schedule, have no timetable, so they can come in any time. We must live ready for the battles. That's the need to stay empowered. For we do not know when the next battle will strike. We cannot subdue the enemy without power. Even God himself. The Bible says, Thou through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto thee. Psalm 66 and verse 3. It takes power to subdue our enemies. It takes empowerment to reign, to rule and to reign in spite of our enemies. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. You can't rule in the midst of your enemies without being empowered. You can't rule in the midst of your enemies without being empowered. There are some people here, even when they think evil about you, eh, they will catch migraine on the spot. That is the thinking of it. The mentioning of your name will just dig their grave. Can you imagine the demon said, I'm going to attack Jesus? Can you imagine that? When you can't stand him coming. You are the person you are going to attack? Today, from here, the key to that realm of empowerment, we are the enemy is scared at your instance. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The oil in my lamp cannot lighten your lamp. Get your oil. Yes. The fire in my car cannot drive your car. Though you have been with me all these years. Get your phone. Your next attack, nobody may be around. The next attack on your life. Yes. Until Peter was out of the crowd, he would never have denied Jesus. But when he became only him, before he finished. Krapo Keti, Karadangola. You see, all this pray for me, pray for me syndrome. We not get to anywhere, sir. We not get anybody anywhere. When that flight attack happened. Who was there? I was there, and uh, my wife. There's no mentor. There's nobody there. So there's nothing inside you, that's all.
I saw myself in a dream, in a coffin. You know, when the truth enters your spirit, sir, whether you are still far away, you don't become a sheep. When a lion goes to bed, it doesn't become a sheep. No, really. No. That is sleeping, so it must be a sheep now. <laughs> Inside that dream, I responded by the truth in my spirit. Satan, you must be a fool. Because there is no wisdom, no knowledge, you can't say in the grave. No one sees himself in the coffin and stay there. Get lost. I answered them in the dream. God to all them powers beyond what you can imagine, sir. But today we have limited it to the head. It's not there. At that time, the head was asleep. Your spirit man does not sleep. But the head sleeps, it's part of the body. So the word that empowers the one that enters your spirit. Not the logics. The one that enters your spirit. The one that empowers. If you ask the devil how many times he has killed me, that I'm not dead. <laughs> when I go to heaven, there is no devil who can, there is no devil who can kill me. If they can, they will have done that. Time. Thank you, God. No. <laughs> no. Every harassment on your life by the wicked ends today. here finally today I release you today as a terror to the camp of your enemy the last days are the days of power in the body of Christ The Lord said to my Lord, sit down on my right hand and make the enemies their foes too. And verse 2. The Lord shall send forth the rod of his strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of the enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness, from the warm red morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth, unusual outpouring of empowerment upon the end time church that will keep us ruling irresistibly in the camp of our enemies. That's the highway God is launching us into right here. Because from now you not only know what it takes to be empowered, but what is required to remain empowered so that inside, outside, you are just untouchable, unmolestable, unassortable. That shall be your experience in Jesus' name. The whole creation is waiting for the solution bearers of life to emerge from the church. Romans 8 and verse 19. He said, The whole may for the honors of his petition of creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. They are groaning. When would these sons be released? The hour is now. Amen. When power will not be only manifested in the meetings. But wherever we are found, wherever we are found in our offices, in the marketplace where we do our business, in our offices, power, power. Everybody will be seeking for solutions through the empowerment of the saints in this end time. May you never miss your place in it. 
you never miss your place in it. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. In the precious name of Jesus. This is where most of us miss this. Power is in levels. Empowerment is in levels. We had a very clean picture of this in Ezekiel 47 and verse 1 to 5. Afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house. Eastward, for the forefront of the house, stood towards the east. And the waters came down from under from the right side of the throne and the south side of the altar. It's a picture of Jesus in heaven. When I go, I will send him to you. And he's sitting on the right side of God on high. And the water is the word of God. Oh, everyone that has to come to the waters. This picture of the Holy Ghost, we do not believe him. Should we see? John 7, 37 to 39. That's Jesus on the right side of God, releasing the Holy Spirit to the world. And his empowerment came down in levels. So he measured a thousand cubits and took him through the water. The waters were to the ankle. There are another thousand cubits into the water. It was to the knees. Another thousand cubits to the waters. It was to the waist. Then another thousand, it was a river that cannot be passed over, a river to swim in. So it's in degrees, it's in levels. Now, go back to the New Testament, or let's go forward to the New Testament. The church received power on the day of Pentecost. The apostles stepped into great power in Acts chapter 4. With great power, they prayed into the realm of great power. And then we talk about exceeding great power. Exceeding great power. You see the categories, the levels? From power to great power. From great power to exceeding great power. Ephesians 1.19 To great power. And to know and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Amen. So exceeding greatness of his power is the mighty power of God. Amen. Amen. Some are just at the ankle level, they think they are already there. Some are just going to where the measurement starts. Because at New Bath, that's where we're, 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 we're come to the waters. It's a long journey. A thousand cubits, a thousand cubits, a thousand cubits, a thousand cubits. You don't pass one level, you can't cross to the other. We have same power, but we are yet to see what awaits us. What I wish the church is the works that I do shall ye do also. And greater works than he did. We are too far from what he did. Then how do we get to where he was and to pass over it? But we'll get there. Who ever thought the church would get to where we are today as the body of Christ in Nigeria? And across the nation. We were called mushroom churches. People that don't mean much. That's the meaning. Mushroom churches. As poor as church rat, so were we. They were not wrong because I mean, that's where we were. But another wave brought us to where we are. Another wave will take us to where we are going. You will not miss your place there. From empowerment to 
great empowerment and then to exceeding great empowerment. No one will be tired on this journey. And when you get to that stage, you hear what he said. You begin to operate above all principality and power and dominion and every name that is named. Verse 20. Above all. We are getting there. We must beware of grieving the spirit. No matter what level anyone may be operating in, we must beware of quenching the spirit. They quench not the spirit. First Thessalonians 5:19. Quench not the spirit. such unusual empowerment in Samson's life but it quenched one day but that starts from grieving the spirit he said grieve not the Holy Spirit of God if we don't stop grieving him we end up quenching him you grieve him first before you go to quench him Ephesians 4 verse 30 quench not the Holy Spirit. I mean, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption is our covering. Don't grieve him. Continuity in iniquity grieves him. He gets grieved to a point that will quench him. And when it's quenched, life is gone. Samson stood up as before, and he wished not. The spirit has left him. Shook himself. Nothing worked. He quenched the spirit. It's important to know that the joint empowerment begins with consecration. Turn ye at my reproof, and I will pour my spirit upon you, and I will make my word known unto you. Proverbs 1.23 No one puts a new wine in an old wine's cane. At new birth, we are empowered by the spirit. To operate as sons of God. But to undertake that journey, this is a requirement. So the same thing that gave us access is the same we must watch to ensure it's in place to retain him. To retain him. When the spirit departs, you see how empty a man becomes. As the body without the spirit is dead, is the spirit at work in us that quickens us. The flesh profits nothing. Profits nothing. New birth. Take up point. Fear of God. Start off on the journey. No one among us shall quench the Spirit of God. Amen. Why do we need to be empowered? One for triumphant living 
towards fulfilling our glorious destiny as they went from one nation to another from one kingdom to another people he suffered no man to do them wrong they are on their journey to their promised land yea he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm We require empowerment for triumphant living towards fulfilling our glorious destiny. He said, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you. He wants to dislodge you from your place in destiny. Satan is always haunting for the precious souls to bring them down and crush their destiny. We need to be empowered for triumphant living. Number two, why do we need empowerment? For sanctification, which enables us access to our inheritance in Christ. Sanctified by the Spirit. First Corinthians 6, 11. But such were some of us. Well, we have been washed, we have been cleansed, and we have been sanctified by the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of holiness, so it comes in to empower us to live a sanctified life. And our inheritance demands sanctification for access and delivery. Acts 20 and verse 32. I commend to God and the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give your own inheritance among them that are sanctified. Inheritance not for Jack and Harry in the faith. Inheritance is assessed and delivered on the platform of sanctification. 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 So, he empowers us to live a sanctified life so as to assess and take delivery of our inheritance in Christ. He comes as a refiner's fire to burn off every chaff of carnality and iniquity so our offerings can be acceptable to God. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 5. He is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Helps us to live with a desire to please God. I ask the Lord, Lord, give me a testimony after the order of Enoch to keep living a life that pleases me. Give me a testimony after the order of Joseph, who said, For I fear God. Give me a testimony after the order of Daniel. They couldn't find anything wrong with him, but he was a faithful man in that high office. But can we find a man like this in whom the Spirit of God is? He won't fail to recognize that there is a spirit walking this thing inside this man. And the man, Daniel, was a man of endowment uh, with the Spirit of God. So we need the Holy Spirit for sanctification so we can assess and take delivery of our inheritance in Christ. Whatever the enemy has robbed anyone, you are getting them back. Number three, why do we need empowerment? For sustainable access to revelation. For our breakthroughs. Every breakthrough is triggered by revelation. Arise, shine, your light is come. And the glory of God is risen upon thee. In spite of the darkness and gloominess in the earth, you keep shining. The kings will come to your light. The Gentiles will come to your light. And they are kings to the brightness of your rising. Who are these that fly as the cloud? So it takes empowerment of the spirit. To assess light that triggers sustainable and continuous 
breakthroughs in life. First John chapter 2 verse 20 this is what it says. First John 2 20 But ye have unction from the Holy One and ye know all things. Empowerment empowers believer access to all things. When it's come, it will teach you all things. And be the remembrance, all things, whatever he has taught you. So it teaches us, and we shall remember as well required all things. And our inheritance demands revelation for us. Second Peter 3, I mean 1, numbers 3, is giving us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the revelation of him who has called us to glory and virtue. I'm trying to sensitize your hunger and task for empowerment. It's not just for healing and deliverance. It's for everything that makes for life and godliness. Number four. Why do we need empowerment? For effectual fervent prayer life. Effectual fervent. We had that in the first teaching. Effectual fervent prayer life is not possible without the help of the Holy Spirit. The disciples knew something was coming on the part of their master, yet they couldn't help sleeping. They couldn't help sleeping. They were sleeping. It's not they chose to. He said, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. You want to be, but you can't do it. How be it? His spirit helps our infirmity in prayers. He helps our infirmity in prayers. Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost and all power. You saw his prayer life. So it's no religion. No. It's the enablement of the Spirit of God. It makes all the difference. There are many people crying on the mountains now around various nations and in Nigeria. Oh God! Oh! Ah! Energy of the flesh. They cry and cry and nothing comes out of it. But you know what he does? For we know not what we should pray. So he directs us to what to pray. Amen. Many know how to pray, but they don't know what to pray. They don't know what to pray. They know how to pray, but they don't know what to pray. So what is how going to help you to do? You won't get anything out of it. What to pray? He said, you don't know what to ask him. So there are people who are asking, you don't know what they are asking. He said, you don't know what to ask Eh? You don't know what you're asking. They are ready to Jesus. But that's the mission. He helps our infirmity in prayers and shows us what to pray. What to pray. Which makes prayer effectual. It makes prayer effectual, resort oriented. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. 27, 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself helpeth our, our make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be altered. Now, go to verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts, knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit. For he make an intercession for us according to the will of God, which enables answers to our prayers. You pray according to his will, be confident that he hears you. That's his job. No prayer life can be any more effectual than help than the one that's said by the Holy Spirit. He directs you to the will of God and he shows you what to pray and enables you to pray by destroying the infirmity of the flesh. You know how many times we have knelt down and then you slept off? You know how many times you are praying and then you forget the prayer point? <laughs> Holy Spirit, help my prayer life into another level. Help 
my prayer to come and pray that prayer. Empower my prayer life to another level. Empower my prayer life beyond the infirmities of the flesh. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Now, number five, why do we need to be empowered? The Spirit of God empowers our given life into realms of strange financial fortune. He empowers us to their power I bear record. And beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. Now, when the Holy Ghost empowers a man's given life, he does it willingly. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. He does it willingly without any stress around him. Without any stress, no games, no gimmicks. Without any stress. He said, therefore, to abandon knowledge and faith, the Lord for us, see that to abandon this grace also, the grace of empowerment for a tireless given life, a willing given life, a joyful given life. He takes that, sir. He takes that. To rejoice at every opportunity to give to the needy. Give in promoting the kingdom. It becomes a lifestyle. You are not struggling. To their power, I bear record, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. Begging us with much entreaty that we should receive the gift. You know what happens? In their poverty, yes, yes, yes. they were addicted givers. Then grace of abundance came upon them. Hallelujah. My God. It takes empowerment to sustain a giving life. It takes empowerment of the Spirit. Sir. And that is the only way to sustain the true riches of God. You know, <laughs> true riches. No people can make money up and down. True riches. Riches that come at your command. Riches that answer to your commands. Riches that answer. You are not struggling with riches. You are not praying for it. It answers your command. Because of sustainable giving grace. What do I call it? Sustainable giving grace. This these are all multi dimensional up, you know, blessings of empowerment. We have limited that to Satan is attacking you, attack him. You know, it's beyond that. It's beyond that. May everyone's given life change level here. Not for the good of the poor or the needy, not for the good of the church. You are, you are, look, you don't know how significant you are in the church, sir, until you leave. There are nothing has left. Except it's not the church of Christ. Except it's not the church of Christ. The church of Christ does not know who lives. We need that grace. He has despised. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endured forever. They will never play financial game in his lineage. They are free from it. You know, it has become a, an issue of heritage. We are getting there. And when we get there, we never step out of it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I want to believe that this would steer our hunger and thirst for his empowerment. A number of us have been robbed of so many things that belong to us. I give to you the rain, the former rain model, but I also come down for you the rain, the former rain, the latter rain, the same one. And I will restore to you the years that the cancer was eating, the caterpillar, 
the farmer will migrate and reach the You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord. And my people shall never be ashamed. Whatever the enemy has stolen from you, you are empowered to experience your restoration. And there shall be dramatic restoration testimonies. We saw two things here in church. One we once heard of someone who lost his job for 19 years, got it back with all payments and allowances paid. But this year we have someone who was robbed of his job for 26 years. 26 years. He restored and all allowances and everything paid. The years the cat has eaten the caterpillar. Whatever you have lost to the enemy, under this anointing, I decree your restoration. I decree your restoration. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit is a covenant platform for our restoration. Therefore, whatever the enemy has cheated on you for, you are getting it back sevenfold. You can imagine not going to work for 19 years and then they paid all that belongs to you and calculate your promotions that will have come in the process and pay you in one day and you just walk away free. My God, God will make you to laugh. That's why we need to be empowered so we don't, get, we don't continue to be cheated. We need to be empowered. We don't get, continue to be cheated. And in Jesus' name, it's your turn. It's your turn. It's your turn. My prayer today is that you are living here as a brand new man. After Saul was anointed, he was turned into another man. Empowerment turns ordinary people into strange men. By the empowerment on this mountain of Shiloh, God will turn you to another man. Why do we need to be empowered? For protection and preservation. Protection and preservation. Ephesians 1.13 We are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 40, I mean 3, chapter 4, verse 30. The Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So we are empowered to be protected and preserved till the coming of the Lord. Can I hear your amen? amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What are the things to do to be empowered and stay empowered? Remember, the Bible is a what to do book. It's a book of covenants. I have this provision for you, but these are the things you must do to take delivery. I obtain for you power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. But to assess the power, what am I to do? After being born again and baptized in the Holy Ghost, which is our gateway to it, of course, what do I do next? Empowerment will only answer to a genuine thirst and crave. Without a thirst, you can't gain access. Oh, every man that thirsted come to the waters. A thirst. David prayed, Oh Lord my God, only will I seek thee. Psalm 63, verse 1. My soul thirsted for thee, and my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land. We are no water is to see thy power 
it takes a task and a longing to step into realms of power. Isaiah 41 and verse 17, the Bible says, When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open up rivers in high places. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers in high places. Rivers. I will open it in response to their task. And fountains in the midst of valleys. And I will make the wilderness a pool of water. And the dry land springs of water. Where? Not until when. When the poor and the needy seek water. And there is none. And their tongue fails for thirst. I, the Lord, will open up the rivers. So it takes a long game to have it. Paul, the anointing, the, the anointed one, was involved in fasting often. And fasting is prescribed for empowerment. It's pre prescribed for empowerment. Is it not the fact that I've chosen? To lose the bags of wickedness, come and say power. To undo the heavy burdens, say power. To let the oppressed go free. And that you break every yoke. Because yokes are only destroyed because of the anointing. It takes a longing of the soul. And a task of, of the soul and a longing of the flesh to be empowered. What must, must I do to stay empowered? It takes a right heart to be empowered. Right motive to be empowered. A right heart, a right motive. A right heart, a right motive. See me on the power of God. Earlier the power of God, they call Lord, I mean, no hands. The Holy Ghost will give me. Say, give me this money. Give me, I mean, here this. You know, we had a wave one time, you had the anointing. Flagrant disregard for the truth. Peter said, your money perish with you. You think you can... And he went on and said, verse 13, Simon saw that through the laying of hands, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money. And Peter said, Your money perish with you. We think you may receive the Holy Ghost with money. He said, Your heart is not right before God. Your heart is not right before God. Verse 21. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. You can't partake of the Holy Ghost without a right heart. Looking for power to be famous? Zero. Power to be acknowledged? Zero. You have no part or lot in this matter because your heart is not right. In the sight of God. Second Chronicles 16 and verse 9. The eyes of the Lord runneth to and fro in all the earth. To show himself strong in the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect towards him. Look around. Who is next? For next level empowerment. Look around. Who is next? For next level empowerment. Look around. Number three requirement for sustainable empowerment 
a heart for God and the interests of his kingdom I found a man after my own heart by name David 1 Samuel 13 14 and we saw his heart in chapter 17 who is this uncircumcised Philistine that should defy the armies of the living God we saw where his heart was his, his heart was not in the reward that anybody would give him who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the army of the living God he went with his life in his hand against Goliath he returned triumphant by the anointing on him I found David my servant with my holy oil have I anointed him everyone with a genuine heart for God enjoys the continuous release of unction continuous release of anointing continuous 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 a heart for God entitles us to fresh oil from day to day a, because whatever he decks you with he know you will use it for him it's for him you are after him your heart is on him so a heart for God and for the inside of his kingdom and that will deliver us to continuous flow of fresh oil flow of fresh oil Psalm 89 verse 20 to 24 I found David my servant a man that my own heart with my holy oil have I anointed him then we shall not exact upon him or the sons of wickedness afflict him I will be down his foe before him and plague all them that hate him our law for God is a covenant requirement for sustainable empowerment our law for God our law for God our law for God So it doesn't just answer to a cry, oh God, empower me, empower me, okay, for what? What's in what you're looking for? What do you think qualifies to access? What does it take to assess the realm of continuous empowerment? Be committed to the continuous study of the world. For where no wood is, there the fire goes out. Proverbs 26 and verse 20. Be committed to the continuous study of the world. That is the wood that keeps the fire of the Holy Ghost burning. The fire on the altar must be kept burning, shall not be put out. But the priest must put wood on it every morning. Leviticus 6, 12 and 13. Every morning. Every morning. No matter the cry, when there is no wood, the fire will go out. The fire will go out. We need the wood to keep the fire burning. We need the wood. No. My God. Before the word came, we were in prayers. After the word came, we stopped prayer. <laughs> now, now, we got prayer, bringing the fire. We didn't have the wood to sustain it. After we got the wood, we quenched the fire. Can you imagine the state of the church? <laughs> Before the word came, sir, prayer, anything by prayer, everything by prayer. After the word came, with all prayer is no longer necessary. So back to square one. You will never be back to square one. Amen. You will never be back to square one. Amen. No amount of intercession will be a substitute for the need for continuous revelation. So they must work together. They must work together. Prayer without the word is fire without the wood. The word without prayer is wood without fire. Dead. Dead. To 
to keep the fire burning, we must remain committed to the continuous study of the world. For that is the wood. That's how Paul kept it burning. And he taught Timothy, study. If you don't want to be ashamed, if you don't want the fire to go out, study. 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 He said, look at me. Bring my books for me and my notes. Second Timothy 2, 15 and 2 Timothy 4, 13. The apostle will give herself to prayers and to the ministry of the world. The two together. And so there was an eruption of power that led to explosive growth of the church. In conclusion, empowerment is for service, not for show. Empowerment is for service, not for show. Empowerment is for service, not for show. Without a heart to serve, none of us is a candidate for empowerment. It's not for show. It's for service. Christ was anointed to set free the captives, to bind the brokenhearted, to open the prison doors to them that are in. You are anointed to serve, not for sure. That one is a pastor does not mean a servant. There are many bossy pastors who are serving nobody else, but everybody must serve them. It's for serving. You can't be empowered sitting down. You're empowered serving. There are many founders, like some people like us, who just think foundership is a sort of for service. You lose the power in no time. Sir. No time. There are leaders in church, head of unities, and that they think that is power. You are not serving, they are just serving you. You are wasting your time. Wake up! You saw the way he sent the apostles out. Everybody on his mission is entitled to his empowerment. Yes. He called his twelve and gave them power over all devils and to kill diseases. He didn't give them power to go and sit down and say, We are apostles. Power, go. Power, go. Power, go. Go into the feet. Go, serve me. Luke 9, verse 1. And they went forth healing everywhere. Now, Matthew 10, verse 1. He gave them power again on clean spirit. And to heal. And to heal. Power is to. Not for. Power is to. To do something. To do something. To do something. And to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. In Mark 16, he gave them power. 2, verse 7. And verse 12 and 13, they went forth everywhere preaching the word and anointing with women who are sick and healed them. It's all we are empowered to serve, not to sit tight. We are empowered to serve his interest, not our interest. In serving his interest, our interest flows in on their own accord. Can I hear you? We can't sustain the power without sustaining the service. The sustainability of the empowerment requires sustainability of stewardship. And serving God lies as sustainable empowerment. And serving his interest lies as sustainable empowerment. Some of this may be Old Testament in your view. By my little calling, I had no privilege for a honeymoon after marriage. And I can't remarry. So that experience is gone. And I couldn't feel it. I didn't feel it. I didn't feel I'm wrong. In those days, nobody gives offering to anybody. So it's not offering motivated. 
It's not offering motivated. It's not. It's not popularity. There was no microphone where we're preaching. It's not that you are preaching to a group or something. I rode on the motorbike like Elijah on the chariot to a place. How many were there? There were less than 60. But I mustn't get there later. The helmet on the one on my back fell off. I couldn't wait. He said, Helmet, and I said, Match where, where it is. Can't wait. <laughs> and there were not many tips like today. But we met it there when we came. <laughs> Somebody put it by the side. Hey. If it's today, it has gone overseas. <laughs> Amen. God. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. People are not ready to serve and they want to be empowered. You are wasting time. It doesn't happen. Empowerment, sustainable empowerment is for still worship. Is for still worship is not for leadership. Is for still worship is servants who emerge leaders. Leadership is a product of still worship, not the other way around. Leadership is a result of still worship, not the other way around. The servants indeed today emerge leaders tomorrow and they still keep serving. And they still keep serving. And they still keep serving. Not to come down. In conclusion, empowerment is for enthronement. So we can gain command over the affairs of life. Rule down in the midst of the enemies. It's for our enthronement. When you are in government, they say you are in power. Is that what they say? We have been redeemed as priests and kings to reign on the earth. No king reigns in Israel until he's anointed. Empowerment is our access to enthronement. Enthronement connotes command. Enthronement command not come up in the precious name of Jesus before you are out of this mountain of Shiloh your enthronement shall be established This is one evidence of fresh oil, joy and rejoicing. You can't be anointed and be done. They call him the oil of gladness, the oil of joy. Every truly anointed person exhumes the joy of the Lord as a lifestyle. My God is giving us the oil of joy for mourning. That's the anointing. In the garment of prayer for the spirit of heaviness, and we may be called trees of righteousness, the plantains of the Lord that he may be glorified. The anointing of the oil of grace above his fellows. Paul the apostle said, Yea, and I will rejoice. Under the persecution of false brethren, yea, I will rejoice. You can't take the joy away from an anointed man. As you sustain your access to fresh oil, watch out for the manifestation of joy and rejoicing as a lifestyle. And that will return into healing, health, and wholeness. For a merry heart, do it good like a medicine. But a broken spirit dries the bones. Watch out for the joy. Maintain the oil and you retain the joy. Maintain the joy and you retain the flow. Retain the joy and you, you retain the flow. I 
I want to believe. But each one will choose to align with the covenant demands of sustainable empowerment and keep enjoying it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And keep growing in it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And keep enjoying it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. From now we are never your name is called for evil. The power of God at work in you will strike. Yeah. Wherever any devil may take your name to, there shall be a crash from heaven. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We are built up into a spiritual house as lively stones. You come against the stone, you are broken. The stone comes against you, you are grinded to powder. From now, I release you as touch not entities to your world. Yeah. And may all the blessings of empowerment outlined in this teaching begin to manifest in your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Of our life from now shall be brighter than the previous. The manifestation of the Spirit shall be on the increase in our life from time to time. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Rise to your feet. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise. up your two hands and thank God for the empowerment that has been transmitted to us in the course of these three teachings this morning. Walk with you. Empower me into the next level in my Christian journey. Come on, go ahead and pray. We are at one level right now. There are many, many other levels ahead. Empower me to the next level. Empower me to the next level in my Christian journey. Empower me to the next level in my Christian journey. name we are praying. I got a testimony from Smith Wigglesworth many years ago, 1979. Then we had that experience in one of our local crusades. After the meeting, we got to our room where we were staying, because these are village crusades. It was one room for about five of us on the mat. So we're getting in a black human-sized structure faceless, rolled out from the door. 
as we open. Not nobody was sleeping while awake. And a big ball like a vector leapt from the window. And I said, hey folks, the devil has no right to tell us when to pray. Go and sleep. We slept on the head of the devil. I said, when you wake up in the morning and somebody looks stiff, just touch him. You don't pray, just touch him. We all woke up. So you can be transmitted with power through the testimonies of others. You, you, you live in fear to lose your place. There's so much inside you. Most time you are not you are not in touch with it, but in the precious name of Jesus, I pray that everyone's their new desperation today will lead to new levels. One disoriented individual began to scratch my face on a sticker. And the other person said, look, why are you doing that? He said, go and report to him. And right on the spot, he went blind. Life in Abuja. Right on the spot, he went blind. I don't know him. I don't know his name. I didn't play for him. I didn't play against him. I didn't hear until when I heard he was blind. Like, My God, whosoever touches you, touches the apple of my head. We got to one of those nations and one notorious witch had arrived. He was welcome with pumps and pig and tree. Blah, 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 all those demonic things. And we came in and came to the same hotel. She fled. Abba. She disappeared. I didn't see her. I didn't know she came. We arrived in the hotel. She left. We are talking of power. We are not talking of speeches. Power. 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 From today, yes. with a genuine claim for a genuine purpose, with a right motive, I decree your new level of empowerment. <laughs> and by this fresh empowerment, I decree supernatural restoration of whatever the enemy has stolen from you. Anointing, I curse every hand of the wicked on any one of us. Everyone appointed to death is rescued right now. Everyone appointed to death is rescued right now. A ritual killer or whatever, caught up with some individual and took her and the phone rang while they were taking him in the call and I was speaking in tongues on that I think he saved that he said, oh, that's my father who is he, Bishop Ilebo? the park, please come down tell him we didn't touch you tell him we didn't I was speaking in tongues they did not that they heard what I was saying I was speaking in tongues, please tell him we didn't touch you he had his money to go back to where we took him from my God, we are going somewhere <laughs> Somebody was going for a marriage. They took him this year. And when their head saw it, said, Are you a winner? I said, Yes. I don't have a best problem. Please let him go. Let him go. Let him go. From now, the devil can't wait for your trouble anymore. Yeah. It's your turn. Presses grace to keep pressing to new levels of empowerment. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Now, let me humble us with this 1,000 cubits, 1,000 cubits, 1,000 cubits, and then 1,000 cubits. How many thousand? Several. 4,000. So let's calibrate. 4,000 levels of empowerment. How much? 4,000 levels of Maybe I'm just in 100 now. Maybe 50, I don't know. Because I'm not there where they're counting it. Amen. Don't ever feel you are there. River 
Rivers that cannot be passed over. Rivers that, that you can't be in the flesh for a moment. You can't be in the flesh for a moment. Rivers that cannot be passed over. You can't be the nature of a moment. Rivers that cannot be passed over. Rivers that cannot be passed over. Jesus came out of the grave to operate in that realm. He said, don't touch me, don't touch me. We are not there in the realm. We are not in that realm anymore. We are not in that realm anymore. We are not in that realm anymore. See yourself as registering in a school of 4,000 classes. Not 100 level, 200 level. You know, 1,000 men. 4,000 classes. You, and you have to move from one to another. One to another. One to another. One to another. And now, none of us is 1,000. And the thing is 4,000. I don't know whether you are one, but I'm not sure I'm 1,000 yet. But we are going 4,000 way. Amelo Prengano Kanako. Please, grace, to keep pressing from level to level in the school of power. Go ahead and pray. Pray that prayer. You get to a level, you say to this, go, it goes. You say to that, come, it comes. Pray. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. name we are praying. Good news. Good news. Good news. Good news. Now listen. God will never allow any of us to be tempted beyond the present ability in us. So what to carry now can deal with what is harassing you. What you carry presently can deal with what is currently challenging you. Isn't that good news for someone? You don't have to wait to reach 1,000 level. Where you are now, whatever comes against you, God means I have enabled you at this point to deal with it. I reach 500, then I'll be able to deal with this sickness. Right now, where you are, for I will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. I am the principal of the school. Yes. I will let them give you the exam of, you know, class 3 and class 1. No. You will not be tempted beyond what you are able. Yes, yes. So where you are now can deal with what's confronting you now. Yes. Where you are now can deal with what's confronting you now. Yes. Come on now. Look at those things in the face as I command you. Command you! Get off my back! Get off my back! I command you, get out of my way! Satan, get behind me! Satan, get behind me! I have authority over you in the name of Jesus! Get behind me! Get behind me! In the name of Jesus, I have authority over you! Get behind me, Satan! Get behind me now! Get behind me, Satan! And get behind me now! Get behind me, Satan! And get behind me now! Get behind me, Satan! 
and get behind me now! In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let me tell you this. When you confront those issues in the name, you are taking cover under the anointing of Christ. Hallelujah. Come on now. You are taking cover. When you say in the name of Jesus, get thee behind me. That I'm invoking the anointing of Christ, the anointed against you. Get thee behind me. My God. So wherever you are now, he has enabled you at this point to deal with those things. You say to that first spirit, get thee behind me, whoever. And you say in the name of Jesus. Because that name is like an anointing spread forth. So the name is an anointment. Psalms of Solomon chapter 1 and verse 6. Is it 3 or 6? The name is an anointment poured forth. Amen. Therefore, the divergence, we are divergence of Christ, love thee. When you say in the name of Jesus, yes. you are spraying the anointing. Hallelujah. The anointing of Jesus the Christ at whose name every name bows. You are saying, Look, my anointing may not get to that level, but here am I. With the authority to use the anointing of Christ. Get thee behind me in the name of Jesus. Now, whatever you don't want to see anymore after this event, yes. come on now, command them. In the, in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Get thee behind me. Robelekete. The name of Jesus Christ. Get thee behind me, Satan. The demon of powerlessness. The demon of loose talk. Cannot think. It. Get thee behind me, the same year I was saved by taking cover in the anointing of Christ I didn't know what I was doing I said Jesus Christ if it's true that you did what you did in the New Testament do it now this anointing came forth and tuberculosis went home yeah. went back therefore that sickness that came with you is gone forever <laughs> that oppression that came with you in the name of Jesus, get behind you now. That confusion that came with you to this convention, to this silo, get off your back now. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. No one prayed for me. The anointing in the name set me free. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, every word of healing you hear will sustain your health. But now you have authority over it. And it must obey you. In the name of Jesus. Excited this morning, lift up your two hands and celebrate God. Give Him glory and praise. Hallelujah. Please, we have some 
some special information for all foreign ministries that are here. You are required to please step into one of those tents at the honor entrance for the special information. We love you. All of the co-laborers in the ministry that are here, be blessed. Everyone's ministry is taking a new turn. You have done what it takes to go to the next level, you'll get there. And from now shall be from level to level, and from glory to glory in everyone's life. There are many, many great ministries that are here today, and I've been here also since yesterday. We'll be doing more recognitions tonight. And for our royal fathers who are here, be blessed of the Lord. And be honored by the God we are honoring. May your return back home establish your authority the more. And keep you shining for Christ. In the name of Jesus. To all our foreign delegates, welcome. Welcome. And welcome. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for all of the blessings of this hour of visitation. Let's give glory to God. He has truly visited you. He has visited me. Give him more thanks right now. Thank him because we are living here this morning with renewed empowerment. We are living here this morning with greater empowerment. Our levels have changed. Levels of authority, levels of dominion. To God alone be the glory forever. In Jesus' wonderful name, we are prayed. One thirty will be our appearances at the various um, specialized classes. We will still have them displayed on the screen, the locations, uh, but in case you have difficulty locating any of these, please make inquiries from any of the church officials that are close by. And for the ministers from outside Nigeria, as announced earlier, this is the honor entrance. You just go straight on to the end of uh, the office building there, and there you'll find the tent where you'll be attended to. Let us together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship. Surely, that's the goodness of all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Shiloh 2022 and Covenant Highways, please greet your neighbors as you go. God, for the specialized classes, by 1.30, we are all converging in the church auditorium before we go to our various classes. The time 1.30, venue, the church auditorium. God bless you.